and welcome to the Spiritual and Empowerment Living with Tia podcast, a sacred place and resource for spiritually centered women who want to go from the mundane to the magical life for overcoming fear and doubt, reconnecting with the goddess, understanding messages from spirit, and uncovering your spiritual gifts so you can finally live the life you deserve. Well, hello, Spiritual Trailblazer. Here we are. Another lovely episode of Spiritual and Empowerment Living with Tia, your Thai magic. I'm very excited to do this episode. I was doing some digging uh, into the background of your and why I, over the course of my 11 plus years, are really diving into spirituality. I was able to find a couple of new things to learn, which is great. It's always good to learn something new. So before we dive into today's topic, you know, I like to fill you in on what's going on and all that jazz. And I want to tell you that even though you may be across the ocean, as I look at the stats and I see there's over 40 countries that listen to this podcast. So while I know that you may be across the sea, across country, know that I am Feeling your energy, I am understanding that we are in difficult times. So if you are in the group of people where it's a little bit harder than normal this time of the year, I want to tell you that it's okay to feel what you're feeling. I'm not saying that I am this person to give you permission, but sometimes people need to hear that it's okay to feel what you are feeling. It's okay to go through those emotions. I get it. Okay. So what you're going through is valid. And if no one told you that, I'm here to tell you it. Okay. I'm going through my own emotions right now. Um, I understand that There are things that I just will not be doing this year. And I know I talked about in a previous episode, but in case you're new to this podcast, I'm just going to say it briefly. I am accepting the fact that there are things that I just will not be doing this month, this season, because of COVID. And that's it. Period. End of story. It doesn't mean that I can't feel what I feel. It's just acknowledging the things that will not happen. Okay. The flip side is I saw a post on Instagram and I'm just paraphrasing here because I know I'm going to butcher it, but I know you get the gist of it. It went something like now I get why after the um, pandemic, it was called the roaring nineties or excuse me, (laughs) roaring twenties after the pandemic of, what was it, 1918? It's called the Roaring Twenties. And it goes, because everyone just couldn't wait to get dressed up and go outside anywhere. (laughs) So I get it. So once this is over, you know, we're we're going to celebrate even more. So that's something to look forward to. But hang in there. You're not alone. Okay? You're not alone. If you haven't, shifting gears now, if you haven't already connected with me on Instagram, please do so. I'm at cosmic underscore witch underscore goddess. I am posting various things under those categories uh, for multiple reasons, and I'm going to get into that in another episode, but uh, I'm noticing even more as I progress in my spirituality, how the cosmos play a huge part in my life, in all our lives. It really sheds light on a lot of things that we do. So I uh, incorporated the cosmic part. So if you want to learn about how the cosmos, the planets, zodiac signs, all that jazz impacts your life, eclipses, things like that, come on over, If you, especially if you're a visual learner. Uh, you know, and and let's connect there. We're on our phones often anyway. So drop by, get some info, connect. 
And also, my Goddess Domain group is back open. Uh, there's been some changes there. I'm going to be renaming it soon to reflect the changes. Uh, but go ahead to Facebook, Goddess Domain. And uh, I'll be posting some things there that I won't post anywhere else. So it's going to be some special treats in there. So go on over to Goddess Domain, connect with the other lovely women in that group. Okay, that's your community. I love to see you there. Also, if you haven't already, check out uh, the previous episode, Magical Herbs, to get you through the winter season. I'm actually drinking my black coffee with cinnamon in it. And if you listen to that episode, you know why uh, I, I put cinnamon in my black coffee. So that's uh, that was a fun episode to do. Now we're going to go to today's topic, Yuletide. So you heard me say Yule, the topic is Yuletide. The difference is Yule is the day, that's December 21st, sometimes it's the 22nd. Yuletide is the season. So of course you can use this interchangeably, a lot of people do. But if you want to know the background, I like knowing the background of things. I wouldn't say I'm a historian. My pop was, my pop just... Gosh, he knew so much about history. Oh, my gosh. And I learned so much from him. But I do take an interest on origins, um, you know, whether it's word origins or someone immigrated to the U.S. I love hearing your stories. I mean, it takes a lot to leave, you know, your country and go to another country and make that your country. It's so fascinating. Um, so I love origin stories. Uh, so I figured, you know what? Let me present that to you. So you'll tie, like I said, you'll, you'll see it different places. That's the season. You'll is the actual day. I'm going to take a little coffee break here. I'm telling you, that coffee is amazing. I also put on my oils. I have, and this is from the Glamour Witch. I have, she was also on the podcast. So you can just scroll back a couple of episodes. I have secured a bag oil here and empowerment oil it smells so good and it's just giving me extra energy to do this all right so before there was christmas there was yule and so for this episode and i meant to say this in the beginning i'm going to give you the history a brief history of yule and then we're going to go over some symbols magic of yule like what does this actually mean like what, what is this yule tide what's, what's the magic behind it and then things that we can do. Um, and of course, I will provide links for you to do further research because, you know, I always encourage that. I am a start, a, a start, oh, I can't talk, a start, starting point of sorts. <laughs> oh my gosh, these, I have brackets on the back of my uh, teeth and it just slurs my speech at times. It's so frustrating. Um, so, yeah, we're going to talk about the history a little bit. Then we're going to get into the magic of the season, symbols, and what you can do. Uh, as I was saying, because it's important to know the origin. And then from there, we can take some of the tradi traditions. Gosh, these brackets. Traditions. <laughs> or we can tweak them, disregard them, whatever. But at least I presented to you some of the history and then you can go down that rabbit hole and see what you want to take from there as i always encourage you to do independent reading this is how it works when you're on this path start that knowledge you know, from wherever or get that knowledge from whomever okay and read as much as you can, watch as many videos, see what works for you, what doesn't work for you, cross-reference. It's so important. Okay, we got that out the way. Now, like I was saying, before there was Christmas, there was Yule. And this is really the honoring of the cycles, the seasonal cycles, bountiful celebrations. And of course, the Yule, the solstice, the first day of winter is the darkest night of the year, which in turn, we are celebrating the return of light. So let me just hone in on that for a minute. So in uh, my 
I want to say two blog posts ago, the winter goddess, I talked about how winter gets a bad rap and I understand it's cold. It's darker during this time of the year. There's ice outside. The, the wind blowing makes your skin hurt. I get it. However, this is the time of the year where we do self-reflections. It's darker now. So this is also a great time from a symbolic standpoint to look at our shadow selves, our shadow aspects. And just as a side note with that, shadow doesn't mean anything bad. Okay. We got to stop. And it's not everyone's fault. It's a little bit of a propaganda. When we hear shadow or dark, don't, it's not bad. Okay. Like, for example, I hear black magic, white magic. There's no such thing. You know, it's this whole black magic is evil, white magic. No, magic is magic. It's how you use it. It's, It's like money. Money itself is neither good nor bad. It's how you choose to use it. Okay, we got that out of the way. Winter is beautiful because this is the time where things die off, figuratively and literally. Okay, whether it's relationships, whether it's, you know, plants outside, everything goes through a cycle and people don't like that sometimes because we don't want certain things to end. This is the time where some things get um, frozen. So in other words, we're putting some things on the back burner to revisit later during the springtime. Lots of beautiful things. So check out the Winter Goddess Magic blog post. But I just wanted to talk about that because we're honoring the cycles. We can't just celebrate summer like oh it's so great it's sunny outside or spring for people who don't like it too hot oh i love spring it's just the right temperature well life is not always just the right temperature right we have good days we have bad days we have horrible days we have great days some things end some things begin some things start all over again rebirth Okay, so we can't really fully dive into our lives if we're just going to honor one cycle because that's the cycle that we feel good and, you know, it's all chum chumri woo, you know. <laughs> and then winter comes, we're like, oh, I hate it. It's cold. It's dark. Uh, this is where you get your thick skin, right? Another way to think about it is when you boil an egg, it's in heat. Is boiling, the eggshell gets hard or, excuse me, soft, right? Eventually, like it's the inner part I'm talking about gets soft. But the the outside, we have to, once we're done, we, we have to crack the egg, crack it open, and it's no longer yolk. It's actually soft. We can eat the inside. That's what I'm saying. This is where we get that thick skin from, right? And then come springtime, we, we crack it and open it up and look at, what we have done during this winter season. Look at the the uh, progression of our self-reflection. Now, bountiful celebrations, of course, not so much this year because of the pandemic, but yeah, look at all the things we do for the holidays. Even if you don't celebrate uh, Christmas itself, there's still so much to do looking at the lights, going to the Christmas villages, uh, su- supporting small businesses. I do that every year in Philly. We have Christmas village and there, there's these little cabins that you get to uh, visit small business owners and buy their gloves and their scarves and the candles. And there's also this uh, place that has little Russian dolls and things like that, all to support small businesses. Okay. And of course, you know, you have your work parties, your holidays. There's a bar here in Philly that decorates for Christmas, well, all the seasons. Halloween, they decorate, they have the themes. Okay. And really it's because we, we are celebrating so much. We're celebrating the fact that we made it this far. We're celebrating the fact that, uh, you know, we're coming to an end, a closure, things that needed to end. And now the light is coming. So much to celebrate. Now, going a little bit further. Yule comes from a name for a 12-day festival celebrated by Germanic people around 
the winter solstice in December and January. So by the 900s, that's how far back this goes. And I know I'm going to butcher this word because I don't know how to pronounce it. But the, the word Yule develops from Yule, G-E-O with the little accent over it, L. And again, no worries. I have the links in the description so you can go down this rabbit hole. With cousin forms in such other dramatic languages as Old Norse and Gothic. Christmas can refer to December 25th itself, but it can also refer to the whole Christmas season. Other terms for the Christmas season are Christmas time, Christmas tide, where tide refers to an old term meaning a season or period in the course of a year, day, etc. Okay, so... Uh, it states here in the Christian church, Tide historically has a stricter sense of a period of time that includes and follows an anniversary festival, etc. Which is true. There's a festival going on. Uh, Saturnalia uh, happens, you know, so it's a lot. And And that's what I like about this is that we can really take a look at how it became what it is today and i'm not even going to go with the smear campaign of old old uh, ways okay so i'm not even going to go down that route i felt like i'd done it in previous episodes but you can also look into that where you know people celebrated this season the way that they do the old ways pagan ways and new religions come along does a smear campaign and hence why we call it different names okay that's that moving right along all right more about the history we have here from the website learn religions and here's the fast facts did you know traditional customs such as the yule log the decorative tree uh, can be traced back to Norse people who called this festival Jul, J-U-L. The Romans celebrated Saturnalia beginning on December 17th, a week-long festival in honor of God Saturn that involved sacrifices, gift-giving, and feasting. In ancient Egypt, the return of Ra, the sun god, was celebrated as a way of thanking him for warming the land and the crops. And then this website goes on to explain how other religions also celebrate the light and uh, uh, Kwanzaa candles, et cetera. So a little bit more about the origin. All right. So this is the time of the year where Druid priests sacrificed a white bull and gathered mistletoe in celebration. And so I'm saying this because mistletoe, that's what we use now. And people, you know, gather under there to kiss each other. But there's a deeper, there's a uh, longstanding history with that. Okay. So, um, I mean, not too pretty, though, sacrificing a white bull. But here we are. Okay. In the Feast of Jule, or Yule, that lasted 12 days celebrating the rebirth of the sun and giving rise to the custom of the burning of a Yule log. Now you're starting to see Yule log, mistletoe, this 12 days, which makes you think the 12, day of, 12 days of Christmas song. So you're starting to see the beginning of what we celebrate today. Now, the Roman Saturnalia, and you see there's Saturn in that word. Um, so it was a week long party held in honor, as I said, of the God Saturn for sacrifices, gift giving and special uh, privileges um, for the slaves and a lot of feasting. And it has here, although this holiday was partly was partly about giving presents and we have the theme here of giving presents. More importantly, it was to honor an agricultural God. OK. Now, citizens deck their halls with, with brows of greenery and even hung small tin ornaments on bushes and trees. Bands of naked revealers often roam the streets singing and carousing 
a sort of naughty precursor to today's uh, Christmas caroling tradition. So again, we're seeing the beginnings of what we do today. And then also this is uh, a battle be- battle between the Oak King and the Holly King. And it goes on and on and on. So again, a brief history of it. I wanted to give you that. Uh, again, please make time to learn a little bit about that because it has some insights there. Uh, and it, it, it just helps us to better understand what we're doing. And I'll end the history with this. So before there was Santa Claus, there was the Christmas witch in Italy. There was Holda, a gift-bringing dramatic goddess who also filled that role. Um, So again, and then there's Odin who, who would bring gifts to children. And yes, St. Nicholas did exist, but uh, before there was Santa Claus, we have again, the Christmas witch, Holda, from the dramatic uh, side, dramatic goddess, okay, Odin, Norse god. So we we have these um, figures that is existed before Santa Claus. So I'll just leave it there, and you can you can uh, continue on with that history and <laughs> learn more. All right. Symbols of Yule. This is a fun one because, well, I think the history part is fun too, but that's me being my little (laughs) history zone uh, of origins and stuff like that. And another thing too, of course, there are many different origins because there are many civilizations, many cultures. So that's normal. Don't get too caught up in, oh my gosh, Uh, What if I celebrate it this way and I'm doing it wrong? No, you're not. You're doing the celebration based on what you identify with, what what intrigues you. I mean, you can have a past life where you were part of the dramatic people or you were Italian. You know, you just don't know. So that could be it, too. So don't think that you're doing something wrong or you can't do it. You just need to understand that what you are drawn to has a reason behind that all right let's go to some of the symbols because i mean you can bring this into your home and even if you're someone who's new to this you're like well what can i bring into my home what is this let's begin and let's start with the mistletoe i think that's one of the most uh recognizable uh items you can bring in your home so it's uh it has a female element to it so it has feminine energy and that means that it's a receptive energy nurturing which is why i can see that it's uh oh let's kiss you know it's just like i want to give you something and the person has to receive it because if the person doesn't want you to kiss them then it ain't happening uh <laughs> but it states here it holds much importance as it was used by druid priests in special ceremonies during the winter solstice They believe that its green leaves represented the fertility of the mother goddess and its white berries, the seeds of the forest god or oak king. Druids will harvest the mistletoe from sacred oak trees with golden scythes and maidens would gather underneath the trees to catch the falling branches, preventing them from falling to the ground. For if this happened, it believed that all the sacred energy in the plant will pour back into the earth. That's pretty cool. The branches and sprigs were then divided and distributed to be hung over doorways as protection against thunder, lightning, and other evils. Mistletoe was also worn as an amulet for fertility and hung over the headboard. So I can see, again, how this became Let's Kiss. I mean, it's all about fertility. So, I mean, you know, you kind of start off with the kiss before you take it to the next level. (laughs) right it's like a little starter there uh so yeah pretty cool so bring a mistletoe in your house and you can do something like uh this this is symbolic of mother goddess and fertility so even if you are someone who wants to take the fertility angle and you want a summer baby uh (laughs) you probably want to bring a mistletoe in your home 
or if you wanted to use the, the new tradition and you just want it there so you can just give a little kiss, a little peck, you could do it that way. Totally up to you. The Yule tree, I think uh, we know what this became. The Yule tree was also another important symbol in pagan tradition. Originally, it represented the tree of life or world tree among early pagans. In ancient times, it was decorated with gifts people wanted to receive from the gods. It was adorned with natural ornaments such as pine cones, berries, and other fruit as well as symbols sacred to the gods and goddesses. In some holiday traditions, garlands of popcorn and berries were strung around the tree so that visiting birds could feed off the tree as well. I wonder what that Yule tree became over the years. The Yule log. The custom of burning the Yule log began with an ancient Scandinavian or Scandinavians who burned a huge log felled from an ash tree to honor their god Thor. In the Celtic tradition, a continual hearth fire was kept to prevent spirits from entering a home. In order for the fire to keep burning, a large oak tree was filled with and brought into the home, or excuse me, was brought into the home where the tree was placed trunk first into the earth. With the last remnants set aside to burn with next year's fire. So it looks like they put the log in there um, and let it burn with, I guess, the next Yule log. It was also believed that the longer the Yule log burned, the faster the sun would, would come to the warm earth. I like that. And you could go online and get a Yule log. I even seen people make their own Yule log. All right. Other Yule traditions and symbols. Candles. Or another way to have an internal flame within the home, they symbolize the light and warmth of the sun and were used as a way to chase evils and lure them and lure back the returning sun. Reefs, we see that today, were also traditional in ancient times for they symbolized the will of the year and completion of another cycle. See, that's what I did not know. Some of the things that I learned. Uh, they were made of evergreens and adorned with cones and berries and hung as decorations throughout the home. They were also given as gifts to symbolize the infinity of goodwill, friendship, and joyfulness. Bells were often rung during the winter solstice to drive away demons that surfaced during the dark time of the year. They were rung in the morning as everyone began to wake up to chase away dark days and herald in warmer, brighter days following the solstice. Elves first became associated with Yule because the ancients knew that the spirits that created the sun inhabited the land of elves. By including elves in the Yule celebrations, ancients believed that they were assuring the elves' assistance in the coercion of the sun to return. Mm, gingerbread. I, I really like gingerbread was considered to be a specialty bread during this time since ginger has not been available until the Crusaders brought it back in the 11th century. There were strict laws regarding specialty breads in that time, so gingerbread was only allowed to be produced during the holidays, and thus it became associated with winter and Yule. Imagine that. So it could have easily been gingerbread for springtime. I don't know, but it's just really interesting how that happened. Okay, so I don't know how to pronounce this, so forgive me. Okay, it says Wassail, Wassail, W-A-S-S-A-I-L, derives from Old English words like ways hell, which means be well, be hell, or good health. It is a strong drink. Oh, now we're getting into holiday drinks, people. A mixture of L, honey, and spices or mold apple cider. When pagans went into the forest to fill the great oak for the Yule log, they would anoint the tree with wassail and bedeck them with that we sell. And I'm pretty sure I mispronounced this. So cakes. Thus the ritual was born. At home, 
it would be poured into a large bowl during feast time. And the host, when greeting his or her guests, would lift a drink and wish them, well's hell, which they would reply, drink hell, which meant drink and be well. We have the early signs of toasting, people. This is why I love learning origins, okay? Because if we can understand where a, a, a tradition, a saying came from, now we can understand why we do things. Like, why do we say things like, you know, drink and be well? I mean, do we really have to say that? No, but you're, you're sending a blessing to someone is what you're doing. You're saying, hey, I'm wishing you good health and I'm wishing you a good drink during this time of celebration. How freaking cool is that? I think that people who um, are disrespectful to pagans need to start thanking pagans because, I mean, and, uh, and of course, other um, communities, other civilizations who also did this, but they weren't called pagans because... That wasn't their name in different civilizations. There needs to be more homage paid to, to people who've done this because, again, we're seeing early signs of toasting. We're seeing uh, signs of, you know, blessings and, uh, you know, decorations and understanding a real true appreciation for the season because it's it's not oh my God, it's so cold. And like, that's the obvious. Yes, we know it's cold. Yes, we know uh, it's darker, but this is a time of celebration because the light is coming. This is a time of celebration because we are celebrating the end of something and the beginning of something. So I'm wishing you good, well, a good health and a good drink. Caroline, next was also a popular Yule tradition when young children honored the winter solstice with song. They would go through the villages singing door to door. The villagers in return would reward them with tokens and sweets and small gifts which symbolize the food and prosperity given by Mother Goddess to all her earthly children. And look how much the woman is being honored. Right? That was one of the things that was really uh, pissed me off when I really began my spiritual studies was how civilization went from honoring women to basically saying, oh, no, the right way is the patriarchy. You know, like, is, you know, women belong in, in their place, which is, you know, barefoot, pregnant in the kitchen. And it it, it just irked me because when I was reading older texts and just learning so much more about the history, I'm like the, the old way that the so-called right way is honoring women. And of course, you know, they honor the gods too, but look how much dedication goes to mother goddess, that divine feminine. I mean, really? All right. Anyway, uh, those are some some of the the symbols. Like I said, I wanted to tell you some of the, the symbols, some you're familiar with, but it's also with a touch of history. And of course, there's the Christmas holly and the evergreens. And, you know, we can go on and on and on. But I again, I wanted to give you some of uh, what you know and a little bit of history and some of what you didn't know and a little history of that. Now, there are some deities for your... One of my favorite ones, Goddess Freya. We have Gaia, Diana, uh, Bonadia, Isis. Another one I've been working with over time. Another favorite, Demeter. Gods, you have the sun god, uh, Mabon, god, the star, divine child, the oak king, the holly king, the green man, the red man, the horn one, Odin, Blue, Lug, Apollo, and Ra. All right, I'll say it again because I probably went too fast. Goddesses. So the deities of Yule, we have on the goddess side, the great mother and earth goddess, Freya, Gaia, Diana, Diana, uh, Bonadia, Isis, Demeter. On the goddess end, we have Mabon, the sun god, the star god, excuse me, the star divine child, the oak king, the holly king, the green man, the red man, the horn one, Odin, Lug, 
Lug, I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that, Apollo and Ra. Some of the stones, if you're into crystals like myself, for your rubies, bloodstones, garnet, emeralds, diamonds. All right, so now what's the magic of your? We went over the, I talked a little bit about the magic, right? About this is the end and beginning of cycles. Um, this is the time to do some reflection. Okay, but what's the magic, right? We talked about the history, we talked about symbols. But what's the magic behind y'all? Here's the thing. The magic is, this is a time where you get to make this season what it is. What do I mean by that? The magic is you. The magic will always be you. And it is because of that, that you create your your world, your circumstances, and this is not talking about some things that are, that are unavoidable, some things you need to learn in life. I'm not talking about that. What I'm talking about is overall, for example, we can, a normal day outside pandemic, we can wake up and say, oh God, I got to drive to work. This traffic is going to be crazy. I hope I got time to get breakfast. Oh gosh, let me make this coffee real quick. And I'll just put toast in the to- or bread in the toaster and that would be my breakfast. And I got this meeting later on today. I really don't want to talk to Bob. He talks too long. And oh, God. Or you can wake up and be like, ah, you know what? I'm going to make time for breakfast. Even if it's something small, I'm going to make my coffee. I'm going to take these slow sips and driving to work. Uh, you know, I'm going to put it out there that it won't be any traffic or at least it's going to be smooth with if there is traffic. And when I get to work, you know what, this meeting, I'm going to, I'm going to say it now. I'm going to claim it. This meeting is going to go by fast. Bob's not going to talk much this time. Matter of fact, Bob's not even going to show up to this meeting. It's going to be smooth. It's going to be good. Today's going to be a good day, right? Look at where you directed your energy. Look at where you directed your energy. So the magic of Yule is you. You can look at this time of the year, and I know some people in the other hemisphere, it's not winter, but same applies, just, you know, flip the season. Uh, If something's beginning, something's ending. So we're ending on my side. (laughs) If you're on the other side of the hemisphere, it's beginning for you. Uh, So you can look at this Yule Tide, this season as a season where you get real with yourself you get honest with yourself what works for you what does not work for you who has your best interest in life who does not have your best interest in life what's your end game with your career is it where a a place where you want to retire or is it just temporary until you find what you really want to do is paying the bills is keeping up with your lifestyle what is it This is the shadow work part. Get real with yourself during this time. This is a time where you want to seek warmth, right? So listen listen to the previous episode. Download that PDF of herbs and, you know, spices you can use to help you during this time of year to keep you warm, to help with your immune system, and to activate its magical properties, okay? And then you can do your rituals, all right? And it's, it's... kind of leaning towards the next part, what you can do, but you can really focus on your rituals, create something that you can do every day, whether you do it in the morning or at nighttime, something you can do every day to not just maintain your magic, but to elevate it. For example, can you move your hips dance every day? Can you say gratitude, what you're grateful for? Forget about a gratitude journal. Just say what you're grateful for. Can you do that every day? Can you light a candle, stare at the flames, and clear your mind every day? When you're taking a shower, can you thank the water, that element of water, washing away residual, you know, debris, energy, washing away. Thank you for washing away the dirt off my body. Thank you for washing away my blocks, my blockages. Thank you for washing away, fill in the blank. It's going down the drain. It's not coming back. What are some simple rituals you could do every day? Can you look yourself in the mirror and say, I love you? You're 
fucking amazing. You're an awesome person. You're special. You're it. You got the sauce. It's all you, baby. Can you do that? Our words are magical. Can you look in the mirror and tell yourself, I'm freaking beautiful. I'm a beautiful person. I have a beautiful soul. I'm beautiful. Thank you, body, for getting me to where I need to get in my life. Thank you that I'm breathing on my own. Some people are not. Those are simple, easy rituals you could do every day. And if you do that during this Yule time, come spring, not only will you be a new person, you're not even going to recognize yourself. You're going to be like, man, whoo, what did I leave behind in 2020? <laughs> okay. All right. Now, that's the magic. The magic is you. The magic is you making a decision of how you want this Yule tie to be for you. Do you want to decorate? Do you want to have a mistletoe, a Yule log? Gingerbread. What, what, what do you want to do? How do you want to pursue that? You probably have a Christmas tree. We, are, we knew what that was called once upon a time. You're decorating it. You might not have berries on there. <laughs> right? You may not have a berries on your wreath either, but you probably have a wreath or a bow somewhere. Right? How do you want this season to play out for you? That's the magic. Where are you directing your energy? This is the great time to use your imagination. There are so many, you know, Hallmark movies about possibilities, right? Hallmark nails it on the head in a lot of ways. I mean, there are some things like I want them to be a little bit more diverse, but uh, they're going in the right direction, okay? They're simply showing the magic of Christmas, the possibility during this time. So, what, what's your possibility? That's the magic. And with this Yule time, you know, th- that cool air, that cold air, that is just to another way of relaxation. You know, it's like a nice summer night where that cool breeze come in your room. You got the window open or you're outside, you're dining outside. Maybe you got a little bottle of wine. You got your calamari out there and you're eating with your friends outside and you're having a good time just talking that cool summer night breeze it's like that but winter that winter cool night breeze it shakes you up a little bit but let that shaking up get you to think for a little bit like whoo gotta chill what you what do you need to shake off and you're like what do you need to shake up in your life That's one of the things I love about that winter air. It's peaceful, too. Connecting with the goddesses during this time, especially at night. That winter night air is so calming. Can you go to your backyard or your front door and take some deep breaths. I don't care if you got to put a scarf on, protect your neck. You know, sometimes people are like, oh, if I go outside without a scarf, that's okay. That's okay. Can you take like just a few, I don't want to say deep breaths because sometimes that cold air is not good for the lungs. It's too cold and you cough. But can you just, just be out there and get a cool breeze every now and then? Maybe shake some energy that needs to be shaken up, you know, or you just shake it off a little bit. All right. Now what you can do. You can do your celebrations. I get it's a pandemic. So like I said, we're not going to certain things, going to do certain things, but what can you do in your own home? Can you watch Christmas movies? Yes. Can you create your own drinks? Yes. Can you, you know, make a charcuterie board or, or order one? Yes. Can you do a Zoom, um, uh, like holiday toast? Yes. Can you get dressed up and dance to holiday music? Yes. Can you meditate and and invoke the goddesses and gods? Yes. Can you ask for direction during this time? You can, you can do Oracle readings for yourself. Yes. There are so many ways you can approach this season. 
and still maintain some of that Yuletide happiness. Or you can even go all Roman style and, you know, do some sex magic with, you know, with your sex partner, you know, maybe you got a friends with benefit, maybe you got a spouse, you know, you can do that. There are so many things you could do during this time of the year, even though there are other things you can't do, you know, but we can work around it. That's what I have for you for this Yuletide. Uh, I really, I feel like this was helpful. I hope it was helpful. It's just really important. It's so important to understand origins because it makes us appreciate what we have now even more because this isn't just a Christmas tree. It's not just a little thing to kiss under. It's not just a cheers as Christmas. It's me wishing you good health and a good drink. You know, it's symbolizing cycles. It's honoring the gods and goddesses. It's it's all that and more. It's, it's honoring the God and goddess within you because we all have that male and female energy. It's deeper than that. Sometimes it isn't that deep. In this case, it is that deep because we are in these ebbs and flows of the season, but you want to be in the flow with seasons. <laughs> you can be in the ebb during a portion of it. For example, you know, <clears throat> the ebb is just simply you like going back a little bit. Sometimes people use it as like a resistance. Like, are you in the ebb of things or are you in the flow of things? But the ebb can be you just taking a few steps back. Okay. Being in your home with your favorite blanket, watching Christmas movies or romantic movies or comedy movies because you need that time out because you need to unplug from the world and plug into yourself. That's fine. Okay. So don't forget to look at the links. And I forgot to mention this in the beginning because I know today is the 21st and it's supposed to be, not supposed to be, there's this like cosmic thing happening uh, where it's like the meeting of Saturn and Jupiter and supposedly a, a new age. Now, I thought we were already in the age of Aquarius. I don't know. Like I said, I don't know all the zodiacs and what is it, astrology and astronomy. I don't know all the astrology and astronomy. Okay, so I'm still learning that. So that's why I didn't really talk about it. That's why I don't have a separate episode about it. That's why it's not a telescope. I don't, I was reading up on it and I still didn't get it. Uh, <laughs> so yes, uh, I think it is Jupiter too. Saturn is definitely Saturn and Jupiter are meeting and they usually meet, uh, I think it was, so I saw something about every 200 years and then something every 800 years. And we're supposed to see like this bright Christmas star. Uh, so do some research, Google it, cross-reference, because I'm still learning. I don't get the whole, I don't get it completely. So I'm just going to read more on it. But um, just, you got homework. <laughs> okay. As always, I'm rooting for you. I'm sending you so many blessings. Thank you for bearing with me as my brackets slur my speech. Uh, <laughs> remember to be kind to yourself. Okay. And I will talk to you soon. As always, Spiritual Trailblazer, thank you for tuning in. Do make sure to stop by and visit me at tiamariejohnson.com. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Last but not least, be kind to yourself. I'm rooting for you and I'm sending you so many blessings. Until next time.